Today we're going to take a look at translations. Translation is another word for slide. So if we look at the diagram to the right, this triangle, I'm going to grab a different color, was moved right and then down. So there was a slide horizontally and then a slide vertically. You can also look at a vertical shift down and then a horizontal shift over. But all it is is sliding your polygon left, right, and up and down. So translation has the notation, okay, with a capital T and then noted down below with X comma Y. X, right, being your horizontal shift and Y being the vertical shift. It can also be noted as X comma Y with the arrow, and then it has your X and a Y to it. But to the X and Y, they show either in addition or subtraction. So if we use the example to the right, A was moved right one, two, three, four, five, six units, and then down one, two, three. Okay, right six units would be adding six to move it right. And then to move it down, it would be minus three to the Y value. Okay, a translation is also another type of isometry. Okay, so that means the image after we translate is congruent to the original object. So we can make note that all angles are congruent and all side lengths are congruent. So any area is going to remain the same. The perimeters of the polygons are going to remain the same because the figures, again, the image and the pre-image are congruent. So example one says determine the coordinates of the image of the point 5-3 under a shift of two units to the left and one unit down. So if we're going to take the point 5, negative 3, you're just going to subtract 2 to the x and then subtract 1 to your y value. And then we have our new point, 5 minus 2 is 3, and negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. So we just take these values right here and either add them or subtract them to the given x and y. Number two. Determine the coordinates of the image of negative 8, negative 3 under the translation um, xy to x plus 4. So this is a shift right because of the plus 4 and then a shift down because of the negative 1. This rule is also the same as with a capital T for negative 1. So we're going to add 4 to the x and it says to subtract 1 from the y. So our new point is negative 4, negative 4. And number 3, it says determine the translation. So you can write it with the capital T or the XY with the arrow that maps the point negative 5, 5 to the point 7, 1. Well, we need to take a look at how the X is moved. Okay, so we went from a negative 5 to a positive 7. So that means we must have added a number. So to go from negative 5 to 7 we add 12 and then from a 5 down to a 1 it must have mean we subtracted because the number got smaller and we subtract 4. So the two ways to write this would be with a capital T if it's adding 12 to the X positive 12 subtracting 4 to the Y negative 4 okay that's one way You can have the little parentheses, but you don't have to. 
or another way to write it would be x comma y arrow. We take the x, add 12, take the y, subtract 4. Either way is correct. Number four says a translation maps negative two, negative five to the point negative four, negative four. What is the image of one four under the same translation? Well, we first have to identify the translation that moves. Um, so negative two, negative five, two, negative four, negative four. Well, that x value got smaller. So it got smaller by 2, so we subtract 2. So this translation is t, negative 2, and then the y value went from a negative 5 up to a negative 4. So that's adding 1. So the shift is t, negative 2, positive 1. Now if we apply that to 1, 4, so 1, 4, we subtract 2 to the x, add 1 to the y. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and 4 plus 1 is 5. Example 5. The image of a point under the translation t3, negative 4, is negative 1, 5. What was the original point? So we have a point, some point that has an x and a y value, we're going to follow the rule, okay, t3, negative 4. So what did we add 3 to and subtract 4 from to get negative 1? So you can kind of take a look at this as an equation. What plus 3 gives you negative 1? So what number plus 3 gives you negative 1, and solving for x, we would subtract 3, and x is negative 4. For the y's, we have y minus 4 equal to a 5. So y minus 4 equals 5. Add the 4 to solve for y, and we get y equals 9. So that original point, I'm going to write it right here, is an x value of negative 4 and a y value of 9. So I want you to pause the video and try number 1 on your own and then when you're done unpause the video and I'll go over it. So now you try. Okay, it says the image or I'm sorry, the transformation t negative 2, 3 maps the point 7, 2 onto. So it's going to take this point and map it to what? So the translation is subtracting 2, adding 3. So that would take it to the point 7 minus 2 is 5, and 2 plus 3 is also 5. So on the back, number 2, I also want you to try number 2. So if you would pause the video and then press play for me to go over it. So this one's saying the image of a point is this. So we started with some point and we went to 3, 7. And we move there by subtracting 2 to the x and adding 4 to the y. So using these equations, x minus 2 equals 3, and y plus 4 equals 7. Add 2, we get an x value of 5. Subtract 4, we get a y value of 3. So the answer, that original point, is 5, 3. Okay, on to some graphing. Draw and label the triangle ABC with the coordinates given. So you plot these points on your paper, and I'm going to graph it up here.
Okay, now that we have ABC graphed, we're going to graph and label the image of ABC under a shift of 4, negative 3. So this means, this 4 means we're going to go 4 units right, and a negative Y means we're going to go 3 units down. So take every point, move it four units right and three units down. So one, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, here is a prime. Move C, one, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, C prime. B, move right, one, two, three, four, down. One, two, three, here's B prime. So if I draw the triangle, notice it remained congruent. I didn't make it larger or smaller. We just moved it right and then down. So it says graph and label. It doesn't say to state the coordinates. Next one, draw and label pentagon ABCD so its vertices are the points given. So take a moment and graph the pentagon. So it should have five sides. I'm going to graph it up here. Okay, there's my pentagon. Draw and label its image under the shift, and okay, that's also the same as T, 13, 0, of the pentagon ABCD. So we're just taking and moving each point, because of that 13 or X plus 13, 13 units right. Because it's doing nothing to the Y, or if you look at the notation with T, it's a zero. It's not moving up or down. So we just take each point and move it 13 units right. So 13 units right brings us to 7, negative 2. You could also just take each X value and add 13 to it. Negative 6 plus 13 equals 7. B, negative 3 uh, plus 13 is 10. So B should be at 10, negative 4. 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you could also take a look at, well, in my, after you move one point, in my pentagon, since it's congruent, B to C is 1, 2, 3 units down. So 1, 2, 3 units down is C prime. And then from C, D is left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units is D prime. You can do it that way too. And then from there, E is up 3 units, 1, 2, 3. So there's E prime. And connect it back to A. Number 5 says to write a rule to describe the shift. Well, pick one point. So R to R prime went left one, two, three, four units, okay? And then from R to R prime, it went up one. So if you write it out, we move left. You gotta pay close attention to the notation. R to R prime, R prime's the image. Left four, up one. So with the T, be T minus four, positive 1. With the xy, it'd be xy arrow, x minus 4, y plus 1. Either answer is correct. So to finish the notes, um, we're going to take a look at a glide reflection. It says at the top, a composition of transformations is when two or more transformations are performed. 
The symbol for composition of transformations is an open circle. So it's like the dot for multiplication, but it's open. A glide reflection is the composition, so that includes these two transformations. It is a um, glide, which is your slide or translation, and a reflection. So not only was this triangle to go to its image, move right, but it was also reflected over that line. And you can reflect first and then, okay, um, slide it, doesn't matter. It's also an isometry. The original figure stayed um, congruent to its image. So in example number one, we see this notation. In this notation, just like your composition of functions, you do whatever's on the right first. Okay, and then you slide. So in this case, we're going to draw the figure after reflection across the line x equals zero. So we do this first. The line x equals zero. Well, x equals lines go horizontally. I'm sorry, this is vertically. So x equals lines intersect the x-axis right, in this case, right at zero. But this just happens to be the y-axis as well. So we first reflect, okay, so reflect E over this line, so one unit from the line of reflection, so one unit over here, here's E prime, and then two units, so two units, X prime, and then T is over five, one, two, three, four, five, so then over one, two, three, four, five, here's T prime. Now, with a composition, we take that image and we're going to now do the translation. And because there's a zero there for x, there's no shift left or right. And because the y value is negative five, it just means now we're going to take each point and go down five. So one, two, three, four, five. There's x double prime. One, two, three, four, five. T double prime, and the double prime, one, two, three, four, five, is just noting that we've done two transformations. So E double prime, and then sketch your triangle. We're gonna do one more, and it says to try, but let's actually do this together. So remember, we do whatever's on the right side first, so we're gonna take this and slide it. And we're only gonna slide three units to the right because the y value is zero. So taking it one, two, three units to the right, C actually lands on the A. And then one, two, three units, here'd be A prime. One, two, three units, B prime. So one prime symbol notes the first image. Now we're gonna take that and reflect it over the x-axis. So the x-axis is here. So the reflection is going to be the mirror image. So from the x-axis, we count up one. So count up one to the other side. Here would be A double prime. Same with C. Count up one. So count up one. Here is C double prime. And then B is counting up one, two, three, four, five. So then one, two, three, four, five. Here is B double prime. And there is our answer. Doing it by hand requires us to have our study card handy. So if you don't have your study card, take it out, because I'm going to refer to the rules. And what we need to do first is take the point that's given. So first, we take 2, negative 6. And we're first going to reflect it over y equals x. Now that rule on your study card, so I'm going to write the rule over here on the left. If 
the rule for y equals x says to take a point x, y and switch it. So it becomes y, x. So I'm going to switch to negative 6. It becomes negative 6, 2. Now I'm going to take that and translate it down 1, or I'm sorry, left 1, down 1. So if I subtract 1 to each, we end up with a final answer of negative 7, 1. And then the last one, we'll go over together. So we do this first. Um, so I really didn't need to write the first there. So if we start with 2, negative 6, again, same point. Now the rule for the y-axis. A reflection in the y-axis from your study card is, says to take x, y, and switch it to negative x y. So it becomes first uh, reflection across the y-axis says to negate the x, keep the y the same, so negative 2, negative 6. And then to finish with the translation of 0, 4, well you can think of it as adding 0, but you do nothing to the x and add 4 to the y. So that ends up with negative 2, negative 2.